Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the new Pulsar thermal units that we're carrying. Um, I'm going to go over just a real kind of quick review as to why I'm, I'm liking these Pulsar products better and better as I'm using them. Uh, this unit right here is uh, Trail XP50. I've got it mounted on the Browning A-Bolt, uh, 25-06 bolt action. I've been testing this unit for a little over 30 days now, and the thing has performed exceptionally well. Uh, the clarity is at its price range is good or better than anything else I've been able to find. I'm going to kind of touch real quick. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail and try to keep this short here. Uh, but I will have another video coming back with some comparison uh, footage actually shot off the unit. Um, anyways, I, what I kind of want to touch on here is just why I'm liking this Pulsar stuff so much. And I'm, I, I guess kind of the easiest way to summarize it is just as I'm looking at the stuff, I'm seeing the button layouts, um, the onboard battery, uh, like in the case of the trail units, onboard video, onboard image capture, um, a lot of slick features and essentially just the way the thing is built it, it, it just screams high quality to me so like one of the things I'd like to touch on is the base mount that's included in the unit um, as you can see that they've got quite a little bit of slop adjustment in this base uh, so as far as being able to put it on forward reverse have quite a quite a bit of adjustability for the different mounting options that you're going to bump into. I think their base is very well thought out. Um, and also, it's a little bit long. At first, I didn't know what to think about that, but that that plus the way that it screws into this portion here on the scope, it seems to really evenly distribute the weight. Uh, it handles recoil amazingly well. I've tested it on several different guns. And in every instance that I've tested it, uh, clarity has remained really good as far as focal clarity and uh, shot precision ha has been outstanding no matter what you really seem to throw at it. Uh, I think they have a 375 H&H &H rating on the thing. Um, one of the other things you'll notice, the rear ocular, they've got a little bit more eye relief than, than most of the rest. Uh, another thing, the down inside the eye cup itself, which I really don't have a good way of showing you that, but but the rear ocular, when you're looking into the thing, it lays very naturally. Your head lays up against the eyepiece very naturally. You don't feel like you're having to move yourself around to get comfortable and to get a clear, full image out of it. Uh, probably the best design I've seen there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on in the Trail and the Helion series, uh, you have an onboard battery, a really nice little bayonet style mount that attaches to it. They've got some options coming out down the road. There's going to be an extended battery for this thing. Uh, we'll take the battery life, I believe, from uh, like about the 8 to 10 hour range up to the, getting close to the 20 hour range. Uh, they're also going to offer a AA clip-on and a CR123 clip-on. Uh, you do have the ability to run, to run via an external. Another slick feature, the cord's included. It's, it's a really nice precision fit cord that comes with it. Um, you can use that to transfer your data off of the scope onto a laptop, but you can also use it to power, the ex, power it externally. Uh, as you're powering it externally, if you have the onboard battery clipped on, it will not only power the device, but will charge your onboard battery simultaneously. I have tested it with the onboard battery off, so you can run via an external. If you would have a failure or something on that battery, you can power via an external, uh, whether that's installed or not installed. So if it's installed, it'll charge. If it's not installed, it'll just continue to run on the external. Um, they include, with, with the trail units, they include a really nice little well with the trail, and this is the Apex over here, which doesn't have the onboard video, but I'll get into that. But, but the, the hunting units, or the gun-mounted units, all include a really nice remote control uh, with essentially all the same features as, as that you'll find on the buttons that are on the units themselves. So uh, that's another thing that I really like about the Pulsar units. Their button layouts are very user-friendly. Uh, the most commonly used or important features inside the menus you can get at either by single or, or uh, long presses of the buttons. Uh, I can run over that real quick for you like uh, in the case of this is the trail. 
the rear button back here is for your video. It allows you if you if you hold it down, it will switch you from picture or image capture to video. A short press will either capture an image or start video, stop video. Um, and the next button up here is going to turn around and uh, increase your magnification scaling or a long press on it is going to activate the PIP or picture in picture moding another Pulsar exclusive that I found to be really really slick uh, in the PIP mode essentially you get a little inset uh, picture in a picture that allows you to have increased magnification coupled up with your widest field of view you have a really fine reticle in the PIP that that is inside the image display that correlates with where the reticle is placed on the wider field of view and the lower portion of the screen. Uh, the big benefit to that is it allows you to have really precise shot placement on longer shots coupled up with immediately being able to get on target with that wider field of view. Um, a really, really slick feature. Again, I believe that's uh, exclusive to the Pulsar units. Uh, the center button, which is more of a square, they have a really nice feel as you're operating from the gun. But the center button, which is a square, is your menu. Uh, short tap of it will get you into the short menu, set brightness, contrast. Uh, has a stadiometric range finder in there that works really well. Um, but but essentially, like those are the short tap is going to get you into the short sub menu, which is where the most common things you're going to do in operating the device can be found there. A long press will take you in to the other portion of the menu is where you do a lot of more technical stuff, but most of that you're going to have set up beforehand, so they've tried to make it easy to get in and out of that stuff. Um, the top button up here will allow you to switch between your color palettes. In the case of this unit, you have uh, uh, black hot or white hot optioning in the trail units. In the Helion, you have some, some more. It's a scanner only. To be quite honest with you, you're, you're going to get your best resolutional clarity and the most versatility out of black hot, white hot on the depending situation. So I think they, they did just fine there. Uh, long press on that button will allow you to activate the Wi-Fi. They have a Stream Vision app. For both the trail and the helion so that you can uh, show what's going on inside the display screen off to a peripheral device uh, one thing that i really like about their stream vision app is most of the control functionality that you'll find on the scope you can also get in the application as far as starting and stopping video i know that was one of the issues with uh, some of the other ones out there is you have to run something else you know, a screen capture in, in tandem because you're not able to video while you're Wi-Fi and off. This unit definitely allows you to do that. Uh, the focus, really slick and straightforward. The unit includes a really nice cap. Uh, this little thing over here on the side is a heat sink. Uh, take heat off of the processor. Part of how they're able to keep their image clarity. Um, there, there's some discrepancy as to the image clarity I think that you'll see out there on the internet. Depending on getting the brightness and contrast settings right, you can kind of manipulate the image outputs to show whatever you want. So the best thing I'm going to tell you is I've looked at about every brand of these there is. And in my opinion, through the display screen on the rear, the Pulsar, it's got a 17 micron sensor. It's going to hang there with the best of anything you see. In the case of this, it's a 640 by... Uh, I believe it's 512 unit, so really good image out, as good as anything else out there as long as you get those settings correct. Uh, the 384 units are less money obviously. You're not going to get as good a video image quality out on a 384 unit, but to be quite honest with you, the, the visibility through the display screen on the rear, if you just really are more important to you about your hunts, then your image capture, if you're not running a YouTube channel or something like that, you can save a little money and drop back to the 384 unit. Um, as far as display screen clarity in the, in the scope itself, I would say it's probably 85% between the two units. It's, it's somewhat unnoticeable in the display itself or where it becomes really apparent is when you start processing your images out. Uh, essentially, in the trail series, I'm a fan of the 38 and the 50 millimeter models. I'm not a big fan of the 30. The 30 uh, loses the focal adjustment, and there's not a big difference in price between the 30 and the 38. So myself, personally, I would avoid that 30 unit and step up and buy the 38 at, at minimum. So 
Um, I've got the Helion down here, which is essentially the monocular version of the same thing. Uh, you know, it's got quite a few more color palettes in it, uh, depending on if you get the XP or the XQ model, uh, you get a removable front lens where down the road you could potentially change, uh, change the lenses out for a little bit better detect and, and magnification range changes without buying a whole new unit. Uh, where the monoculars are, are, in my opinion, potentially a value for a lot of guys, if you get a couple guys going together and purchase a monocular, uh, then potentially you can save yourself some money by shooting with the CMOS technology and just using the thermal monocular uh, for, for detection. Obviously, you know, Cadillac, if you can afford it, you, you can, you know, it'd be great to have one on every gun you've got or, you know, at least have one to where you can interchange it between guns, uh, which is another option inside of the trail unit. Well, actually, I believe it's an option in the trail and the apex as well, but I think you get a little less functionality in the apex, more in the trail. But in the trail, I, you can have, I believe it's three gun profiles with up to 10 zero settings, which that in combination with the stadiometric rangefinder is really handy for the, for the hunting purpose. Uh, but again, the Helion coupled with the CMOS like ATN's X-Side or the Photon, uh, give you the ability to have really good detect and then use the CMOS technology to shoot, which is considerably cheaper. So, you know, if you get a couple guys going together, outfit a couple guns with the CMOS and then run one scanner or share one scanner uh, in thermal, that, that's, that's definitely a good alter, alternative that a lot of people are using. Uh, again, if you're not after all the bells and whistles of the video, you, you just want really high, high clarity. Uh, the Apex series, the new Apex series, they went to an AMOLED internal display screen, so the clarity is really good. This thing running on CR123 batteries, the battery life is very good. So essentially, you're going to lose the video capability, image capability on board. Now, you do have the ability uh, of, of running it out analog. So, so there is that ability, it's just not built right into the unit. But uh, probably the primary benefit to the Apex series is cost while still maintaining very good quality and clarity, um, but, but then potentially also adding some simplicity. So, you know, I, that's one of the quirks that I get a lot is guys that are just worried about the thing being too complex, they just want to go out and hunt. The Apex keeps everything really simple straightforward you, you could essentially be a master on this thing in about 10 minutes um, so anyways again like I say I know that wasn't real informative I'll have some other videos come back show you the menu functioning I want to keep this short but essentially I just want to tell you why I'm liking the Pulsar essentially it comes down to the design uh, the functionality of the unit the clarity the design of the eyepiece it's exceptional for its value. It's, it's the best value I've been able to find. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call toll free 877-806-2977. Uh, my name is Travis Fox. The company is Fox Optic. You can look us up on the web. It's www.foxoptic.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.